Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at the Navy League's annual Sea Air Space uh, Conference and Trade Show at National Harbor, Maryland, uh, just outside Washington, D.C. And we have with us retired U.S. Navy Rear Admiral and legendary uh, submariner Ken Perry, who is the Vice President uh, for Program Integration at uh, General Dynamics uh, Electric Boat. Sir, thanks very much for taking time to talk to us. Well, thanks, Vago. It's great to be with you here at Sea Air and Space. Thanks for the opportunity to talk. Um, it's, it's a pleasure. I want to start uh, on the uh, attack side submarine uh, side of things. Obviously, Virginia class program has been looked at a, as a model acquisition program, long line of deliveries that were ahead of schedule, some below cost as well as you guys were working through that. Those schedule margins for a long time have been eking, you know, getting getting lower and lower and lower, especially now as you're, you're at uh, two boats a year. Talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges and what you and your teammate at Huntington Ingalls uh, at Newport News are doing to try to get some of that margin back into the schedule. Yeah, thanks. Great question. Question. And let me tell you first, it is a very strong performing shipbuilding program. Virginia program recognized really throughout the Navy and even beyond for very strong performance right from the very first boat. Uh, for the last nine years, every boat has been delivered ahead of schedule and, and under target cost. And so we want to continue that very strong performance. But as you indicated, that becomes tougher and tougher. We're setting a new world record with every single hull. And as you can appreciate, that gets more, tif more difficult when you, you're still adding capability and we're still driving cost out and still very focused on delivering the most capable submarines at the most affordable cost. So we've got dozens of Virginia performance acceleration initiatives on, going on an electric boat uh, to drive cost out of every single, out of the design, out of the process, uh, even the acquisition strategy, working very closely with the Navy. Uh, we've taken about $700 million out of the unit cost from the very first uh, 774 USS Virginia to the most recent ship. Uh, a credit to the electric boat team, our partners at Huntington Ingalls, Newport News, and of course the United States Navy. So we've got to continue that. We've got to control the design. Uh, we've got to make sure we're developing every possible efficiency into our build process uh, right through to delivery. Um, obviously, your engineering challenge has gotten more complicated. Obviously, Virginia payload module is something you guys are working on. Um, you're also working on Columbia class as, as the lead on that program. I want to take you to an industri broader industrial base question. Um, I, I talked to Mike Petters, uh, Huntington Ingalls uh, chief uh, executive um, at the Reagan Forum, and one of the things he said is, you know, there was talk, hey, let's try to get to three attack boats a year. Um, CNO last year told me he had a little bit of concern about getting there uh, in terms of three attack submarines as well as Columbia may be a challenge for the new ballistic missile submarine. On top of that, if you're looking at, at VPM as well. Do you think that that would overly stress the industrial base if a decision was made, you know, if, if, if you achieve the submariner's budgetary nirvana and you can get the three attack boats a year and, and do uh, Columbia and do VPM as well as a couple of other uh, the priority programs, you know, is there enough elasticity as far as you're concerned in the industrial base to support that higher run rate for submarine production? Yeah, let me answer it this way. It is Electric Boat's mission to be the most valued provider of nuclear submarines and undersea capability for the nation, for the Navy. So we would respond to that challenge. Would it be a stiff challenge? Absolutely. I mean, as you said, we're building two ships per year, two Virginia class submarines per year now. We're designing the Columbia class. We're designing and we'll soon build the Virginia payload module. That is a big pack to carry. But that's what Electric Boat does. We're here to meet the needs of the nation in terms of submarine capabilities. And so you'd have to, A, make the decision that you say would be forthcoming. So the nation has to decide, and the Navy would decide, yes, we, we can and, and do want to proceed with more than the current shipbuilding plan. I know the CNO has just talked about that in a number of forums. We fully support that. But it would require capitalizing, uh, making major capital investments to increase the facilities. Right now we, are, we can build two Virginia class per year. We are on track to add facilities to be able to build the Columbia class. Uh, so there's facilities investments, there's workforce investment. We have a number of initiatives now at Electric Boat, closely partnered with the, uh, our, our uh, uh, Rhode Island and Connecticut state governments, as well as local and regional governments, uh, to bring in young hires uh, in electrical trades, in welding, and sheet metal, uh, where there's combined uh, college credit and workforce proficiency in these training programs. So I think we have some very strong programs and facilities and workforce 
uh, investments to make sure that we do have the capacity to meet the nation's call. Let me take you to, I want to talk a little bit more about workforce, uh, but I want to take you to the um, Columbia class. Okay. Um, bring us up to speed on where you are on the, uh, the program, on the design of it, and how you guys are integrating that with what the Brits are doing with the Dreadnought class, because obviously the missile compartment is going to be common for both ships. Yep. Um, it is going to be on the Trident uh, uh, 2 missile, is going to be, you know, the D5 is going to be the, the weapon system for both of those ships. Talk to us a little bit about the overall U.S. program side of it, and then the international component of the program as well. Okay. Uh, Columbia class, we have thousands of designers and engineers at Electric Boat that have been working on the design for our new SSBN. The, the nation's security demands a strong, capable deterrent, and especially a sea-based survivable deterrent. The Columbia will be that uh, replacement for the Ohio class. Uh, 3,000 designers that are well on their way to finalizing that design. And when complete, uh, when, excuse me, when construction starts in 2021, that design will be more mature than any submarine class we've ever had at, at construction start. So a credit to the designers and engineers that have been working this now for years already. Uh, on, uh, on getting the materials ready, we've been doing advanced material procurement. As you said, we've been working very closely with the United Kingdom and the Royal Navy on the missile compartment in particular, but the, the SSBN programs uh, writ large uh, between the two countries. Uh, the common missile compartment is exactly that. Uh, we're building the same missile tubes uh, to arm these submarines with the same uh, missiles, and um, that's going very well. Um, and we're on track to start construction of the ship in 2021. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the main production line and then build that submarine in seven years, which is a very aggressive pace. It will build a 20,000 ton missile submarine in the same timeline it took the first Virginia attack submarine to build. So a much larger ship uh, in the same time frame. And that's all to meet the nation's needs. We've got to deliver that ship to the Navy in time. So that ship is, is online as an operational ready missile submarine uh, when the Trident start to retire. The, um, let me talk to you about skills. Yeah. Um, you talked a little bit about how you're partnering with Rhode Island as well as Connecticut. Um, you know, nuclear skills have been something that have been in high demand. We were in the Pacific Northwest. We talked to uh, the commanding officer of um, out of Bremerton. You know, he talked about the programs he's got going on. We've talked to Admiral Moore about some of the programs that obviously NAVC has going on, and NAVC 08 has been working in order to try to build those skills. Talk to us a little bit about some of the specific skill sets. You know, are you recruiting the kind of talent that you need for this? Um, you know, because there is a generational shift. There is an aging out of a workforce that you guys have to replenish. You know, Huntington Ingalls is working the same sort of apprenticeship programs and things like that. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about what you guys are doing um, up there in Connecticut and in Rhode Island. Well, first off, we're hiring. We are hiring at Electric Boat. I mean, thousands. Uh, we'll hire thousands more this year in 2017. We have an ambitious and aggressive and, and necessary hiring plan over the next number of years. It's going to hire roughly the number of people that exist in Electric Boat today over the next 15 years or so. Um, and it's not just hiring anyone. As you said, these are very significant skills that we need. These are nuclear welding skills that take years to, to develop the, the uh, level of proficiency necessary to meet the very stringent quality assurance requirements uh, so that our sailors go out on the safest possible and, and most capable possible submarines. Uh, electrical skills, as I mentioned, sheet metal, uh, pipe fitters, you know, trades that uh, frankly in the U.S. There's, there's been a bit of atrophy in some of these manufacturing skills that we need and we need in numbers uh, to build nuclear powered submarines. So we have good partnerships with regional and state governments and uh, educational institutions. Um, we have plans now to, to do the right hiring, to retain our quality workforce. Um, it's absolutely our, our, our number one asset when we're building these boats for the country. Let me ask you two quick questions because I know your time is short. Question number one, VPM, yep. quick program update. Where are we on uh, Virginia payload module? Yep, well into the design. We're on track to start building those ships building starting in fiscal year 19. So just a couple years away. It's going to add significant capability. Four large diameter missile tubes, which will add another 28 missiles so that those, those ships, Block 5 and later, will have 40 Tomahawk cruise missiles 
and then in the future, a range of flexible payloads. And about those flexible payloads, did you like my nice transition there? I wanted to ask you very about artful. large, it was very artful. Uh, <laughs> large diameter and ultra large, extra large, whatever you want to call it, unmanned underwater vehicles. Yeah. Obviously the Navy's very, very interested in that. Um, you know, the Navy has a huge amount of experience uh, in, in the classified realm in terms of um, all sorts of payloads and, and, and autonomous systems. But talk to us a little bit about that big side and what electric boats role in it, in it is going to be. Because when folks have a tendency of talking about these systems. They talk about com companies other than EB, and I know you guys have been putting quite a lot of thought into what those systems need to look like as well. Yeah, absolutely. Again, when I talk about the mission and vision of the company, it's to be the most value provider of nuclear submarines and undersea capabilities. And unmanned systems is definitely going to be a bigger part of undersea capabilities in the future. There's no question about it. The size of them, the capability of them, and we need to build submarines that are capable of interfacing of deploying and employing all manner of unmanned vehicles, whether those are weaponized vehicles, whether those are sensors, uh, whether there's any number of different payloads. Uh, I've asked my guys at EB to give me the biggest possible garage with the biggest possible garage door and, and talk to me about how, how we can engineer that so we can have the most, po most flexible possible payload volume for the most flexible range of payloads for the Navy. And we're working on any number of things. They, they might be weapons, they might be sensors, they might be power sources, any number of things. But uh, we're the folks that are going to integrate that into a submarine, and in some cases we're going to design and build a thing as well. So are we, should we be envisioning things like, uh, you know, halibut and things like that that have gigantic opening doors on them, or? Well, when we talk about large ocean interfaces, which is kind of the, the term, uh, absolutely we should be thinking about that. Uh, I, I think it's going to be uh, a major enabler of undersea warfare in the future. Uh, we want to give the submarine force, the U.S. submarine force, the additional reach, uh, the additional range of the capability. Um, you know, almost every war game these days shows that the access for nuclear-powered submarines is, is an asymmetric advantage for the U.S. force, and we want to continue that well into the future. Bigger moon pools to carry bigger stuff. Uh, I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, thanks very, very much. And I've made the case, more attack submarines. All, it will cure all that ails you. Sir, thanks very much. We really appreciate it. Thanks very much for the opportunity.